You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to a podcast that I think is going to be listened to for quite some time. As we're talking about the king of the crop, we're talking about the one drone that you could build any drone business based off of, in my opinion. But welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. Yeah, my name's Rob. I'm actually uh, curious to hear your thoughts on this. This is a pretty amazing drone and the fact that it, uh, it's like an evergreen drone. It just keeps bringing value. It sure does. Yeah, people keep releasing new drones and yet it's still there in the mix. and. You gotta give credit where credit is due, right? As far it, as the design and, and build of this particular bird. Uh, you do. It is the Honda Civic of drones, which makes you wonder who's gonna build the next Honda Civic of drones. Because this drone Somebody could be did. one-upped, but uh, how um, is the question. So uh, I'm really excited to talk about uh, today's show um, because the Phantom 4 Pro is, a, is actually back now. Very happy about that. And I think it's time to talk about uh, why it is and will be for some time um, the best drone ever made. And I would like to remind everyone that Drone U uh, was built off of Phantoms, um, but my business was built off of a singular Phantom. Um, Phantom and 2? Phantom 2. Uh, I had the 1 and I had a 2 and then I think I went through 3 or 4 twos because I was flying so much, which was awesome and then went to the Inspire 1. Um, skipped the P3, we ended up getting a P3 so we could uh, train on it, but the Phantom is the drone that, whether you're in photogrammetry doing mapping, whether you're a photographer, or whether you're a videographer slash cinematographer, the Phantom caters to you. It's a drone that if you learn the systems, if you learn how to truly master control of the bird, there is no autonomy at the moment that can one-up uh, pilot skill. There is also so much value in understanding the basic systems of the bird and how it works to solve problems in the field. But it's also the Toyota Camry of drones. It's the most reliable. It always works. It's more waterproof than the drones that have an IP46 rating or whatever. It is the end-all, be-all vehicle. Wow. High praise. So, high, high praise. Uh, before we play today's question, uh, which is brought to you by our drone, you fly in, where you can learn how to master every industry vertical with your Phantom, from orthomosaic construction to point cloud construction to subject tracking, close proximity flight, and advanced videography. If you're like me and you love to fly and you love to learn about things that you love, you won't want to miss the drone you fly in. Droneyouflyin.com. Hey guys, Brian Cole from New York. Love the podcast. Question for you. I've been flying for about a year or so, basically uh, Mavics and Spark kind of things, and I'm looking to get into some like commercial stuff, realty and stuff like that. So I want to upgrade to like a little bit of a better camera. So do you, I know Paul, you love the uh, P4P. Um, is it still like a really good relevant uh, drone to come out? You know, since they've re-released it, should I get that one or now with the uh, re you know, the release of the Evo 2 and uh, the potential of a Mavic 3 coming out this year? Do you think I should kind of hang back and see how these drones pan out? Or, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, DJI re-released the Phantom 4. I probably should scoop one up. So uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I'd love to hear them. Thanks a lot, guys. Great question. And Brian, I think a lot of people are kind of in that same boat. And it seems like it's, and gosh, since we started Drone You all those years ago, there's always been that question. It, and frankly, it doesn't matter if it's drones or TVs or computers or phones or whatever. There's always that question of, should I just wait for the next iteration to come out before doing anything? Well, you could be waiting a while, number one. So the question I think at least to start is, do you have business right now? Yeah. Right? And are you raring to go? <clears throat> if so, don't wait. But what are your thoughts? I agree with you. If you're ready to hit the ground running, stop talking about it. Start running. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's anyway, right. sorry. Yeah, I know. Um, um, we no are worries. all our own. We are all our own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, I know some people don't don't like. Um, I know some people don't like to be uh, called out, bluntly talked to. Yeah. 
But uh, how do you expect to run a successful business if you're going to be sensitive all the time? You can be sensitive a little bit at the time, because I am. But you can't be sensitive all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. All right. Uh, okay. Um, look, yeah, I, I, I missed your question. Sorry. I got so caught up in the whole uh, I, the thought process I was just having. I, I kind of got lost. But your question was, you know, should we be waiting for another new drone? And the answer is no. Um, the Phantom 4 Pro, I've got one right under the camera. Um, I, I've had, I mean, we have what, how many, like four or five right now? Um, we use them for training, for mapping. There's no better drone for mapping. Uh, why? You have the global shutter, so you're having a more accurate capture, number one. Why is linear rolling shutter so important? It's very simple. Look, photogrammetry is measurement from images. So if we take an entire image at once, we literally know, and it's very easy to measure one point from another point. As soon as we use a linear rolling shutter, which scans across one side of the image to, to the next, we introduce a new variable, which decreases you know, the accuracy and the validity of maps. So if anyone ever says, oh yeah, just buy a Mavic 2 Pro for drone mapping, you have my permission to slap them in the face. Um, it, it is uh, not good for that. <laughs> so uh, that being said, um, the Phantom 4 Pro also has the ecosystem of third-party apps from Pix4D to Drone Deploy, Maps Made Easy, Propeller. There, there's just there's a huge ecosystem built around the Phantom. There's so much third-party integration that you can do. So while, yeah, it's amazing for mapping because it has a global shutter, what does that mean? More accurate capture. But it also means faster capture. It means we can acquire images in a third the time as we could with the linear rolling shutter drone. But it also means we can process the data sets in half the time that it would take with, again, a linear rolling shutter drone. So if you're actually doing drone mapping, let's say even three times per week with, let's say, maybe 800 images or more, there's no way you're going to scale a business with a linear rolling shutter drone. There's no way as a police department or public safety agency that you're going to be able to keep up with the volume of mapping and the accuracy that would dictate a legal-based decision with mapping uh, with linear rolling shutter drone. Excuse me. By the way, like honestly, I I've had dreams about being in the courtroom before as a legal expert and ripping people apart because they use a linear rolling shutter drone. Like, I, like literally, I've had a dream of sitting in a courtroom with on good, and I'm just like, uh, like on, uh, like uh, on the, uh, what is stand. it called? On the stand, saying, well, unfortunately, I don't believe. Uh, the witness's testimony because they're showcasing that they can get, you know, a one millimeter uh, um, RMS error when that's not physically possible with a 20 megapixel uh, image flown at 100 feet with a linear rolling shutter camera and then explaining the trigonometry and parallax behind that and why it doesn't work. Let me put it to you this way. If you're making any legal based decisions and you're using a linear rolling shutter drone, um, just be prepared in the next decade to have your ass suit. So, <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to prove. It's it's ridiculous. Um, but whenever we're doing drone mapping, the ecosystem, the shutter, the way that the drone flies, the long battery time, uh, it's perfect for mapping. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, I even think that the Phantom 4 Pro or the Phantom 4 Advance, I like the Advance more than the Pro, frankly, that's just a personal decision. Um, I think it's actually better than the P4P RTK because you, it's so much, the workflow is so much easier. Mm -hmm. And if you already have uh, GPS equipment, there's no reason to get the P4P RTK. And they finally did fix the whole MSL geoid error issue that was finally fixed with the RTK and that's great. Um, but again, when it comes to quote unquote precise grade mapping, super precise mapping, the Phantom is the best. When it comes to action sports, if you want to get the closest shots, if you want to fly below people, if you want to track next to them at high rates of speed, and if you want to have the ultimate control of a drone, there is no drone like the Phantom 4 Pro. People are like, well, Paul, the best drone's a Mavic 2 Pro. Bullshit. No, it's not. The reason it's not is because no offense, but most of the people don't have the skill to even make the, the determination that it's not. And what do I mean by that? I, I always use the example of the horseshoe shot, the shot across the bow of a boat to be perfectly symmetrical, concentric while you're on the move. You can't do it 
with the Mavic 2 Pro, mm. Mavic 2 Enterprise, Mavic 2 Zoom. What happens is that the flight controller reads, you know, the, the angle of roll with the angle of yaw and the thrust, and you can never get a perfectly smooth motion. You always get just a little bit of over yaw from the vehicle mm. because it freaks out thinking there's a safety problem. I, I finally went into logs and figured out what happened just to prove that this isn't empirical based evidence. There's actually evidence behind the empirical evidence. That being said, you know, you can fly a Phantom in places you can't fly a Mavic, and no offense, you can crash a Phantom 10 times over and a Mavic maybe only once or twice. Um, I got really lucky crashing my Mavic into a tree. It didn't hit the ground very hard. Um, I waited a week for all the sand to dry out and then blasted it in every possible way. Um, but the thing is, when it comes to reliability, the Phantom. When it comes to consistent operation, the Phantom. When it comes to what is the safest drone, well, it's the Phantom. Well, why is the Phantom the safest drone? It's the safest drone, and, and, and we've got so much freaking data here at DroneU that I just really wish the FAA would listen to us. You know, when you're flying a plane, what's one of the first things that you do when you're taxiing to the runway? Well, you do an engine run-up, right? Well, at our flight mastery class, we teach the three rules of takeoff, and they're taught now across the board at all of our in-person classes. And the third rule is how to do a battery test. The battery test is just like an engine run-up. But here's the thing. With the Phantom, you can display battery voltage per cell. And if you know the magic formula that we teach at our flight mastery class, then you will know how to always determine in the first 30 seconds of a flight whether you will have a safe or non-safe flight. It, I mean, like, there is one test. I should just patent it, frankly and everyone should use it. That's why I don't want to patent it, is because this is something that everyone should be using for the betterment of the industry as a whole. Um, at the same time, I gotta feed my family too, so it's uh, quite the uh, struggle. <laughs> there are other ways. Yeah, um, so that being said, um, the the reason, the second reason, so reason number one is safest drone is that battery voltage is displayed on main screen, it's available, and you can see it per cell, which is also very important. If you know the magic formula for the battery run-up test, and the third rule of takeoff, then you know what I'm talking about. The second reason that the Phantom is the safest drone on the market is because of attitude mode. Attitude mode is the sensor denied flight mode. It means that you are in control. The only thing that the drone is doing is maintaining altitude, and frankly, it doesn't even do a good job at that. And I'm actually very happy about that. Mm. Um, now, that being said, whenever I fly in attitude mode, I have VPS turned off, which I fly a lot over water. And in our flight over water class, you can learn why you turn off VPS when you're flying over water. Um, but it's this sensor denied environment that allows a pilot to have full control. So if you want to put a drone six inches off a boat at 30 miles an hour, you can do it. Can't do it with the Skydio. Now, will the Skydio autonomously track you better than most pilots? Yes, and that will get you 80% there. That's pretty cool. But to get from 81 to 100%, and AKA in that huge market segment that dictates respect, and you'll always get drone jobs because you have the skill and it's apparent to everyone whom you fly in front of, well, that's going to take a lot of practice. And it's going to take the perfect practice model. But it's also going to take certain types of practice that sequentially increase the level of risk. Because as I was taught in flying helicopters, if you drastically increase the level of risk of your flight and it doesn't match your skill or it doesn't have a slight deviation, well, that's when you have really serious problems. It's when you incrementally increase the risk and then your skill incrementally increases and then you can incrementally increase the risk as your skill goes up. And that's how you kind of safely learn, which I feel like I would have to explain that to my local FISDO as well. Um, but, you know, that being said, um, the Phantom is when it comes to the cost of a vehicle versus the value it can provide, I would be so happy if someone could prove me wrong that the Phantom 4 Pro offers the most value per aircraft. Hmm. Biggest bang for your buck, as they say. Let me put it to you this way. Everyone knows that a Toyota or a Honda are the most reliable cars. Would you agree? 
Um, I think that's true. I think that's the perception, and I think that in many tests that bears out. Now, mm -hmm. would you say that it's probably a good idea to have one of those two cars in your fleet of cars for your family? <laughs> Yeah, I have a Civic. Exactly. So yes. you have one. Okay. <laughs> so in my family, we have Sarah drives a Toyota Rav Four. Oh, we have an Acura now too. I haven't even told you about that. But anyways, oh, geez. carry on. Bombshell. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So <laughs> news. Which is a Honda, as most of you probably know. Uh, yeah. Um, just like Lexus is a Toyota. Um, mm -hmm. so we have a Toyota in the family as well, because even though I love my awesome twin turbo SUV. I know that no matter what, Toyota's gonna work. Yeah. And so we have one, right? So that's in relation to the resources for my family. If I utilize the same formula for the resources for my business, mm -hmm. anyone trying to build a drone business and doesn't have a Phantom in their fleet, in my opinion, you're fighting an uphill battle and it may be almost impossible to even win the battle. Yeah. Yeah, I say that with a large degree of confidence. Well, and really the you know the Phantom obviously it's a little bit uh, more cumbersome as far as traveling with, but it's worth it. I mean, you're taking it to Hawaii, right? Yeah, everyone who says that, wah, so, grow up. So wah me apparently. <laughs> no, I've actually not traveled with one, but I know you're taking it to Hawaii here. Which, by the way, Paul's going to be gone for a while. So yeah, I said goodbye. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm just kidding. I'm coming. <laughs> you broken hearted. No, 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 I'm not. No, but you did hit a pain point because um, a lot of people see me in the airport with that backpack and they think I'm crazy. And I'm just like, well, if you knew what I knew, then you wouldn't think I'm crazy. And the fact that you think I'm crazy makes me even happier. So, because <laughs> that means you can't do what I can do. So, yeah, uh, which is probably not a good way to think. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, there is a huge argument, Rob, for portability and flexibility, and every, sure. everyone loves the fact that they can fold up their mm -hmm. Mavic, that they can fold up the Autel Evo 2, but until there is a drone that offers the reliability, the flexibility with the high-grade sensor that we are used to on the Phantom, there just isn't another drone that is it is going to be there. Now, I wish they would launch that P5 that we saw teased in 2018 with the interchangeable payload and lenses oh, because gosh. then you have the Honda Civic of drones. Then you have the drone that no other drone could beat. You have the drone that offers thermal and EO and mapping and search and rescue. So I wonder, though, if RID is why they didn't. No, I think, uh, hmm, who? Oh, I see what you're saying now. I had to sit there and dwell on that statement I mean, for a second. I wonder. I don't know, obviously, but curious. Yeah, in three years' time, this podcast could be irrelevant. And I hope that's not the case, which is why you should download the Drone You mm -hmm. Comment Guide on Remote ID and go comment so we don't have to live in that hell. That's right. DroneAdvocacyKit.com. So, Brian, I hope that answers your question. I don't know that there's a, a clearer way to state um, the feelings on the uh, Phantom 4 Pro. If I can do it, you can do it. Yep. Awesome. So, well, thanks again for joining us. And uh, by the way, I've got a wicked review coming out for the Phantom. I've got oh. years of footage that no one could even try to mimic if they wanted to. And I cannot wait to put this out. Which is really cool because that's going to show how it stands the test of time. Bingo. Which I, I think is going to be a lot of fun for everybody to see. I'm excited. I'm also excited to be a little more positive in general. So on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone News.